Today we're going to look at lesson 3.6, transformations of graphs of linear functions. Now, if you remember back to last year, you did learn some transformations. Can anybody remind us of the transformations that you learned last year? A rotation. A rotation, all right? That's one of them. <laughs> Kennedy? A reflection, which we are going to look at reflections again this year. All right, give me another one. A translation. A translation. We're going to look at translations again this year. And I think there was one more. It started with a D, didn't it? Okay, it did start with a D. Dilation. Dilation, all right? And so dilations are not something that we're necessarily looking at this year. Dilations were those uh, shapes that got bigger or larger. We're going to look at stretches and shrinks. So it's kind of like a dilation. But, um, but not, okay? So here's what I need you to understand. You have in front of you a cheat sheet, okay? We are going to learn about transformations in a completely different way than you did last year. So you cannot rely on what you learned last year and tune me out this year, or you are going to be completely lost. Now we're going to start in our notes, and you can see the essential question. It says, how does the graph of a linear function, let's talk about this real fast. A linear function, what does that look like on a graph? It's a what? Line. It's a line. First four letters in the word linear spell line. I'm going to continue to drill that into you, okay? So we're talking about a line that is going to shift up, down, right, or left. That's a translation. It's going to flip over the x-axis or the y-axis, that is a uh, reflection, or it's gonna shrink or stretch around the x and the y-axis, okay? So, it says, how does the graph of a linear function, f of x equals x, compare to the graphs of g of x equals f of x plus c, and h of x equals f of c times x, all right? So, how do we compare the parent function, you see that next in your notes, the parent function, which is the f of x equals x, to all these different graphs, all right, or all these different equations. So I want you to highlight parent function. Another quick review question. When we see f of x, what did we learn can, uh, can be changed with f of x? Y. Okay, so if you need that little reminder, just keep in mind that f of x is the same thing as y. Now, here are the transformations of parent functions. Here's what they do. They change the size, the shape, the position, or the orientation of a graph. That's what transformations do. They change the size, the shape, the position, or the orientation. Now, there's four transformations that we're going to look at. Number one is translations. These uh, shift graphs horizontally or vertically, but they do not change the shape the size or the orientation of the graph. So a translation simply moves that line up, down, left, or right. Okay, that's a translation. Then we have a reflection. It flips the graph over a line called the line of reflection, or as you might know them as the x-axis and the y-axis. So a reflection flips the graph or the line. Then we have a horizontal shrink or stretch. The graph shrinks towards the y-axis or stretches away from the y-axis. And then if it's a vertical shrink or stretch, the graph shrinks towards the x-axis or stretches away from the x-axis. Now before you try to visualize that in your mind, okay, we are going to be spending less time looking at graphs and more time looking at actual functions or equations. All right, so if you're having a hard time mentally picturing those shrinks and those stretches, it's okay. But before we move on, I want you to highlight the four types of transformations. Highlight the word translation, the word reflection, the horizontal shrink or stretch, and the vertical shrink or stretch. These are the transformations that we are going to focus on this year. Now, if you look at your uh, cheat sheet, go ahead and grab it. It looks exactly like what I have up here on the screen. We are going to make some changes to it, keeping in mind that I understand that I am telling you certain things to write down, and I'm understanding that when I tell you that you can use this on a quiz or a test, that I know what I told you to write on it, okay? So I am saying all of this to say, 
it's a great idea if I tell you to write it down on your cheat sheet that you actually write it down on your cheat sheet. All right, so here's what we're gonna do first. You see where it says horizontal shift and vertical shift. Okay, we're gonna cross out that word and we're actually gonna change it to translation because that is what our curriculum uses. It uses the word translation instead of shift. So we're gonna change that to a translation. And then I want you to look at the function column and I want you to take your highlighter and I want you to actually go down those first four boxes and I want you to highlight f of x. So I want you to highlight the f and the x. Now when I highlight just the f and the x, I hopefully and you hopefully can very quickly see that they've done what to these parent functions? Because remember, f of x is the parent function. So what have they done to the f of x in these four boxes? They have added or subtracted a number. So when I'm looking at a function and I'm trying to decide what type of transformation has been done, I'm gonna ask myself, have they added or subtracted a number? So I am going to write on my cheat sheet underneath horizontal translation. If it's a translation, okay, that means they have, they add or subtract a number. Add or subtract a number. Because that's a little shortcut or a little tip for what I'm looking for. If they have added or subtracted a number, then this is a translation. Now I have to decide, is it horizontal or is it vertical? So the question I ask, are they adding or subtracting to f of x or just x? And you say, well, how am I going to know if they're doing it to just x? They're going to be in the parentheses with just x. So that's how you're going to know. When you ask the question, are they adding or subtracting to f of x or to just x? If they're in the parentheses, then they're adding or subtracting to just the x, which is exactly what's happening in these first two boxes. Do you see how they're adding h and they're subtracting h, but they're in the parentheses? So what type of a translation is it when they're adding or subtracting to just the x? It's horizontal. Now here's where it gets even trickier, okay? Horizontal uh, transformations are tricky because they're actually the opposite of what you would think. Meaning this, if I'm on the x-axis, what direction is a positive direction on the x-axis? To the right. And what direction is a negative direction on the x-axis? Left. So when you see that they're adding a number to x, what are you gonna think the direction they're moving is? But look at the paper. What does it actually say they're doing? It's the opposite of what you would think. So when they're adding a number to just x, the shift is actually to the left. And when they're subtracting a number from just x, the shift is actually to the right. So you have to be very, very careful with horizontal translations. Now look at vertical translations. This is when they're adding or subtracting from the entire function. They're outside the parentheses. They're adding k to f of x or they're subtracting k from f of x. This is a vertical translation, and think about the y-axis. What direction is positive on the y-axis? And what direction is negative? So look at this, when they're adding k, what, where are they shifting? Not according to my cheat sheet. They're shifting up, which is exactly what you would think, right? When they're subtracting from f of x, what are, where are they shifting? down okay so vertical is a little bit easier because it does what you think it does if they're adding a number it goes up if they're subtracting a number it goes down okay but the key is are they adding a number to just x or to f of x that is the challenging part right there now let's practice translation so look at example one the direction say use the graphs of f and g to describe the transformation from the graph of f to the graph of g. And keep in mind that f of x is the parent function. So here's all that's telling you. I don't really need to focus on the f of x because that's the parent, that's the original line. 
We want to decide what they've done to that original line. Okay, so we're going to look at g of x. And in case you're having a hard time telling, this is an equals right here. It's g of x equals f of x plus 2. Now, this is the easiest way I can teach you this. Highlight or circle the f of x. So find the f and find the x and highlight them. And I see them right there together. So if I highlight the f of x, I can hopefully very quickly see what they've done to this function. What do you see outside of the highlighted portion? What have they done to f of x? They have added a number. So that should take me to which transformation on my cheat sheet if they are adding a number? Translation. So go to translations on your cheat sheet. Now the next thing I got to figure out, is it horizontal or is it vertical? So have they added to, to f of x or have they added to, to just x? f of x, right? It's outside the parentheses. So is that vertical or is that horizontal? That is a vertical translation. So that is a vertical translation. So recognizing that they were adding a number took me to translations on my cheat sheet. The fact that they were adding it to f of x led me to a vertical translation. Now, I need a direction and a number of units. So if it's a vertical translation and they're adding a number, is that up or down? That's up, and how many units? Two. two. You say, how do you know that? Because they added two. Whatever they're adding or subtracting, the number is the units. So it's a vertical translation up two units. All right, now let's try that again on letter B. F of x equals 2x minus 1. Remember, that's the parent function. That's the original line. We're trying to figure out what they've done to that line. So we look at g of x, and you can see I've already found and highlighted the f and the x. So very quickly, you can see that they have done what to this function? What's not highlighted? They've added 3. Again, which transformation should that take me to on my cheat sheet? Which transformation adds or subtracts numbers? Translation. So go to translations on your cheat sheet and ask, are they adding 3 to f of x or just the x? Okay, I heard just x, but where would they be if it was just x? They'd be in the parentheses with just x. This is again outside of the parentheses. So they are adding 3 to f of x, which makes this vertical or horizontal? This is again a vertical translation. Now what direction and how many units? It's plus 3, so that's what direction? Up, how many units? Three units. And we box it in. Now let's try it one more time. Letter C, f of x equals 2x minus 1. Again, that's the parent function, so that's not really where my focus is. My focus is on g of x. All right, find and highlight the f and the x. And again, you can see by what's not highlighted, what have they done to this function? They've added three again. Great. So that takes me to what type of transformation on my cheat sheet? Translation. Translation. Question though, have they added three to f of x or to just x this time? Just x. Just x. They're in the parentheses. So that makes this what type of translation? Now we're at a, we have a horizontal translation. So be careful. Remember, horizontal, we got to slow down and think. They are adding three which makes the direction what? Left, okay? We might think right because it's a positive, it's a plus. But remember, horizontal switches everything. So this is a horizontal translation left how many units? Three units. So back to our cheat sheet, and let's go to the reflection section. Okay, I'm going to circle it. You do not, do not circle it. I'm just showing you where we're at on your cheat sheet. All right, let's talk about reflections. Go to the function column, and let's highlight again. Let's find the f and the x, and let's highlight them. Now, what do you notice about the functions 
or what they've done to the function if it's a reflection? What's happened to the function? Do what, Kennedy? They've made either f of x negative or they have made just x negative. So the trick or the tip to a reflection is a sign change. A sign change. If we notice a sign change, we can go to a reflection. <coughs> so a translation adds or subtracts a number. A reflection, there's a sign change. Now, look at the difference in the sign changes. If I have changed the sign of f of x, it's a reflection across the x-axis. If I have just changed the sign of the x, again, I'm in the parentheses, I'm with just x. If I've changed the sign of just x, it's a reflection across the y-axis. Again, a little different than your brain might think. All right, if I have changed the sign of f of x, it reflects across the x-axis. If I've changed the sign of just x, it reflects across the y-axis. Now, let's practice. Example two, use the graphs of f and h to describe the transformation from the graph of f to the graph of h. Again, the f of x is the parent function. So we don't necessarily have to pay attention to the parent function. We're gonna go pay attention to h of x. Now again, Highlight the F and the X, and hopefully you can very quickly see. Now, we have more options now. Are they adding, subtracting a number, or have they changed the sign? Because now we've learned a couple different things. So what have they done to this function? They changed the sign. I can see that, because if I highlight the F and the X, the only thing they've done is they've changed the sign. So that makes this a what? A reflection, okay? So we can go ahead and write down the word reflection but a reflection across. We gotta decide across which axis there's a reflection. All right, why is it a reflection across the y-axis? Good, they, ch they changed the sign of just the x. They went in the parentheses and changed the sign of just the x, so that's a reflection across the y-axis. Very good. Now look at letter B f of x equals negative 5 minus x, that's the parent function. So we're going to focus on h of x equals f of negative x. Again, if you highlight the f and the x, what do you see that they've done to this problem? They've changed the sign, so that is a reflection. Jamie, it's a reflection across which axis? Y the y. Good, they changed the sign of just the x. So that is a reflection across the y-axis. All right, letter C, f of x equals 1 fourth x minus two. That's the parent function. So we look at the new function. Makana, what have they done? When I find and highlight f of x, what do I see that they've done? All right, well, why a reflection though? What, do you, what have they done to the problem that leads you to the reflection? Uh, the they changed the sign, okay? So you're absolutely right. It is a reflection across which axis? So X. Why the X axis? Somebody help him why, he's right, but tell me why it's across the X axis this time. Go ahead, Jordan. <coughs> They change the sign of f of x. So when they change the sign of f of x, that is a reflection across the x-axis. Let me say this before we move on. A sign change is a transformation all its own. So if you see on your homework tonight um, a negative 2 in front of f of x, you have to understand the negative by itself is a sign change. The 2 is going to be some other transformation. But the minus, the negative, is its very own sign change. It's a reflection. All right, now let's go to the last thing on this cheat sheet. Again, you do not need to circle anything. I'm just showing you where our focus is going to be. Right here on the, I didn't go high enough, right here on the vertical and horizontal stretch and shrink. So that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to cross out where it says compress 
and there's four different spots, and we're gonna change it to the word shrink. Again, our curriculum is going to use the word shrink instead of compress. So we're changing those four compresses to shrinks. Now, once you've got those changed, let's go back to the function column and let's go ahead and highlight the F and the X. And hopefully when we do that, we'll be able to see very quickly what they're doing this time. Now, just as a review, translations, they're going to ha they are going to have added or subtracted a number to the function. Reflections, they're going to have changed the sign. So what do you see that they're doing when it's a stretch or a shrink? When you highlight all the f of x's, what do you see that they've done? Miles. Uh, they are uh, adding, they put an a. But what are they doing with that a? You have an a and an f with nothing between them. They're multiplying. Very good. Do you see that? There's an a and an f with nothing between them. Or you go in the parentheses, there's an a and an x with nothing between them. So, the hint or the tip or the trick for this one is that you are multiplying by a number. You are multiplying by a number. And I would put that in both horizontal and vertical stretches and shrink. That's my hint or my tip or my trick, all right? If they are multiplying by a number, it's a stretch or a shrink. Now let's talk about the difference because this is where it gets super, super complicated. Again, if you know how to interpret this cheat sheet, then this is gonna be easy. If you don't know what you're looking at, it's gonna be tougher, okay? So you can see in these first two boxes that they are multiplying by f of x or just x. Let me ask you that first. In the first two boxes, what are they multiplying by? f of x or just x? f of x, okay? They are outside, they are not in the parentheses. They would be in the parentheses if it was just x. They are outside the parentheses. So that makes this a vertical stretch or shrink. You say, okay, it's vertical. How do I decide if it's a stretch or a shrink? You have to take the number they're multiplying and you have to put it into d these two little formulas and ask, is the number greater than one or does it fall between zero and one? Now, what kind of numbers fall between zero and one? Well, we don't really use decimals, we use fractions. fractions, okay? So, if the number they're multiplying by is greater than one, then it is a stretch. You see that right there? But what happens if the number they're multiplying by falls between zero and one? It is a shrink. So you have to take the number they're multiplying by and figure out is it greater than one or does it fall between zero and one? Because that's going to tell you if it's a stretch or a shrink. But you're not finished because look at the rest of the description. It's a stretch vertically by a factor of a. So you have to tell them the factor. You have to tell them the number they're multiplying by. Now vertical, piece of cake. Whatever number you see in the problem is the number you write down at the end. All right, you with me? But again, what did I tell you about horizontal stuff? It was gonna fresh, it was gonna make you mad, right? Here's why. If they are just multiplying the X, do you see how they're in the parentheses? They're just multiplying the X. We've gotta do the same thing. Is that number greater than one or is that number between zero and one? If the number is greater than one, it is a horizontal shrink. If that number falls between zero and one, it's a stretch. That's not even the part that's frustrating. Look at the rest of the description. It's a shrink horizontally by a factor of one over a. One divided by a. So you don't get to just write that number down. You have to put it underneath a one which is great if it's a whole number because one, let's say they're multiplying by a two. Well, one over two is what? One half. one half, piece of cake. But what happens when the number falls between zero and one? We already said those are fractions. So now I've got one divided by one third. And now I just wanna throw my pencil down and quit. But I'm not going to 
because that essentially is one divided by one third. I can't divide fractions, so I'm going to keep the first number, flip the second number, and change to multiplication. And one times three is three, okay? But you have to understand, you gotta be careful. If it's a horizontal stretch or shrink, there's a little bit of extra work at the end. Now, let's practice it. Go to example number three. Use the graphs of f and r to describe the transformation from the graph of f to the graph of r. f of x is the parent function. So once again, f of x is not where our focus is. Okay, Our focus is on the r of x, and this is r of x equals, again, in case it looks funny, it's r of x equals 2 times f of x. So we highlight or circle the f of x, and hopefully very easily we can see what are they doing to this problem. Now listen, we have a bunch of different options now. Are they adding or subtracting a number? Have they changed the sign or are they multiplying? What are they doing to f of x in this problem? They're multiplying, which takes me to which transformations on my cheat sheet? Stretches and shrinks, okay? Not vertical or horizontal anything yet. We're just down at stretches and shrinks. That's what we gotta figure out first, okay? Now the question, are they multiplying f of x or just x by two? Look at the problem. Are they multiplying f of x by two or just x by two? F of, f of x, so is that vertical or horizontal? Vertical. That's vertical. So we can go ahead and write down vertical, but we gotta decide, is two greater than one or does it fall between zero and one? It's greater than one. So is that a stretch or is that a shrink? That is a vertical stretch, which again, we're happy with vertical stuff because it's by a factor of what? No. What are they multiplying by? Two. So it's a vertical stretch by a factor of what? Two. Remember, it's the number that we see in the problem if it's vertical. Now go to letter B, f of x equals negative 2x minus 4. We cross it out because that's our parent function. You don't have to cross it out, but I just want you to understand that's not our focus. Our focus is on the new function, the r of x. So if I find the f and I find the x, I can see pretty easily what have they done to this problem. They're multiplying again, so that takes me to what, what on my cheat sheet? Stretches and shrinks, okay? What are they multiplying this time? One half. That's not what they're multiplying. F of they're multiplying f of x or just x? Just, just x. They're in the parentheses with x. So is that horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. Now we're doing a horizontal problem, okay? Which means we've got to be careful. Horizontal. Is it a stretch or a shrink? Where does one half fall? Is it greater than one or is it between zero and one? <laughs> It's between zero and one, one, which makes this a horizontal stretch. If you're looking at your cheat sheet, if the, if the A is between zero and one, it's a stretch. Now, it's by a factor of, and this is where we have to be careful, because it's not just the number, it's one over the number. So this becomes one over what? One half. One half which is essentially one divided by one half, and I have to KFC it. I have to keep the first number, flip the second number, and change to multiplication. So what is the actual number that is going to go into my answer? Two, one times two over one is two. So please be very, very careful. Now, let's do letter C f of x equals negative one-fourth x minus two. Again, that's my parent function. My focus is on the r of x. If I highlight f of x, I see very quickly that they've done what to this problem? Multiplied. They have multiplied, which takes me to which transformation? Hold on. Vertical horizontal is not, listen, listen. Vertical and horizontal are not the transformations. The transformations are the translations, the reflections, and the shrinks or the stretches. So right now, we're just trying to get to the right section on our cheat sheet. If they have multiplied by a number, where should we be on our cheat sheets? Stretches and shrinks, okay? So go there first. Now, they're multiplying 
by uh, they're multiplying f of x or they're multiplying just x? f of x, which makes this vertical or horizontal? This is vertical. So now we can decide that it's vertical. But they're multiplying with a 4. So where does that fall? Greater than 1 or between 0 and 1? So that is a vertical stretch. And again, we like vertical because it's a vertical stretch by a factor of what? By a factor of the number that we see in the problem, which is 4. And that is lesson 3.6.